Good morning, dear colleagues. Welcome to our conference, Libraries and the UN Agenda 2030, the role of the libraries in promoting sustainable development. My name is Blaženka Klemar Bubic, and I'm the vice president of the, of the group for green libraries at the Croatian Library Association and the part of the organizing and program committee together with my colleagues, Yasmina Socho, Lana Zrnić and Elvira Gota. On behalf of the committee, I would like to express our special appreciation to the keynote speakers and all presenters, session chairs, and also to more than 100 participants from all over the world. I would like to ask the president of the Zagreb Library Association, Alka Stropnik, to say a few words to us. Dear colleagues, on behalf of the Zagreb Library Association, co-organizer of this international conference, I wish you warm welcome. Of course, it will be better that we are in Zagreb, but I hope that next time conference will be in physical, not virtual world. Librarians are aware that libraries are very important in promoting sustainable development. So I'm glad that today we have the opportunity to hear examples of good practice from all over the world. To all participants, I wish plenty of new ideas, good networking and new collaborations. In a word, wish you successful conference. Thank you. And now I would like to ask the head of the Library of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences of the University of Zagreb, Višnja Novosel, to open the conference. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, meet all of you from all around the world. And I would like to thank, give a special thanks which uh, uh, gave lots of this conference happened so i wish all of you a very pleasant uh conference uh lots of good ideas uh, lots of networking and i hope this is not the last one and uh, i am very sorry that we cannot meet uh here in zagreb but i hope uh, next time it will be uh in live not uh like this so uh, now i announced conference open and wish you a very uh very nice day thank you Thank you, Vishnya. Uh, now, um, I uh, would like to thank, uh, to say a special thank to Hari Saharvirta from Enslip for taking the role of the keynote session chair. Uh, now we can start the keynote session. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning from Helsinki, Finland, and greetings mm -hmm. from IFLA and environment, sustainability, and libraries sections of which are the present share. Today, we will focus on sustainability in the context of libraries. We will have a couple of more general papers, but also two interesting case studies concerning sustainability and Green libraries. However, the focus will be on UN Sustainable Development Goals. There is uh, 17 of these SDGs, and they are quite general. And as such, they do not give a clear guidance what libraries should actually do. Nevertheless, and this is the important point, the SDGs broaden the concept of sustainability, which has often been understood to concern only the library buildings or the emissions or carbon footprint. Now, the SDGs bring in some new aspects of sustainability. And this is especially green with the case of social sustainability. Uh, in Enzalip, but also in a Finnish national project, we've been working with these SDGs and we have attempted to make them more concrete for libraries. Um, in my view, this requires that some goals 
are selected. We cannot try to apply all of them, but select a group of them. And after that, the content should be clarified. And now I'm glad to show how we have done this in, in Finland. So my screen, can you see it now? Yes. All right, fine. So we have selected six goals, which are quite evident for public libraries. So it holds public libraries mostly. Uh, the goals are health and well-being, good education, fighting inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible and climate actions. The next thing is education, which is quite natural goal for public libraries we have to think what does it really mean for, for public libraries. So we realize that libraries support for reading and lifelong learning of children, young people and adults alike. And that we bring in, we can bring in the environmental aspect in this work, starting from story time, to art exhibitions and events. And in this manner, we should define what does it mean for our library that we are applying, we are working with these um, SDGs. And in my view, we should go even further and make the goals even more concrete. Fine. And now, yes, there is. And now we can go to the details with the SDGs. Our first speaker for today is a dear friend of me, Dr. Petra Hauke. She has done a long career in Berlin School for Library and Information Science in Humboldt University, Berlin, Germany. In addition, she has promoted sustainability in EFLA for a long time, and she is the present secretary of ENSLIP, EFLA's environment, environment, sustainability, and libraries section. Her paper will deal with green libraries facing the UN, UN agenda 2030 for sustainable development. And now, Frau Dr. Hauke, bitte, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. My name is Petra Hauke. I'm from Berlin in Germany. I'm a visiting teacher at the Berlin School for Library and Information Science at Humboldt University in Berlin. I'm co-founder of the German Speaking Green Library Network, and I'm currently secretary of ANSELIP, IFLAS Environment, Sustainability and Library Section. Dear colleagues, We are organizers of this conference. On behalf of IFLA, I'd like to express our very special appreciation for your conference dedicated to libraries and the United Nations 2030 Agenda, the role of libraries in promoting sustainability. As you know, the agenda was published in 2015. The 70 goals were adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015 as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which set out a 15-year plan to achieve the goals. 
The agenda is a universal call, a call to all, to all of us, to action, to end poverty, protect the planet, and improve the lives and prospects of everyone and everywhere. IFLA, the global voice of libraries and their users, has been actively involved with the creation of the 2030 Agenda, advocating for the inclusion of access to information, safeguarding of cultural heritage, universal literacy, and access to information and communication technologies, ICT, in the framework. Libraries are key institutions for achieving the goals because libraries can drive progress across the entire United Nations 2030 agenda. Why? Because libraries are well positioned to contribute to the sustainable development goals. As a network of at least 2.3 million institutions, they have both global reach and the ability to understand and respond to local needs and priorities. Not only since the looming climate catastrophe is a worldwide rethinking in the handling of our resources urgently needed. Libraries as educational institutions have a special task here because libraries are the guarantor for access to reliable information, not fakes, but reliable. And this access is a prerequisite for achieving the sustainable development goals. IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, has clearly positioned itself and thus all the world's libraries as advocates for the United Nations 2030 Agenda. As institutions with a social mission, it is natural for libraries to address the major social challenges of today and there are fewer greater than sustainability. The motto is sustainability is libraries business. It's about libraries getting actively involved as role models, as educational partners, and as enablers of initiatives to promote sustainability in all areas of life. And this engagement means more than just information, our usual business. The title of my presentation is Green Libraries Facing the United Nations Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. But what are green libraries? Green libraries have a special focus on the protection of the environment and therefore naturally on sustainable development. Green libraries are generally sustainable libraries. Ansolip, IFLA's Environment, Sustainability and Library section says, environment means the surroundings or conditions in which human beings, organizations, animals or plants live and operate. Environments can be natural, social or cultural. Sustainable development means growth that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In sum, a green and sustainable library is a library which takes into account environmental, economic, and social sustainability. Green and sustainable libraries may be of any size, but they should have a clear sustainability agenda 
which includes green buildings, the emission or carbon footprint of the building are actively decreased. Here we have an example from Taiwan, its first green library in the Taipei by Two Park. The building designed to reduce water and electricity consumption thanks to its large windows. The roof is partially covered with photovoltaic cells to generate energy and also collects rainwater for use in the toilets. But not every library is able to have a new building. But there are more and other commitments for green and sustainable libraries. A green and sustainable library includes also green office principles. The operational routines and processes are environmentally sustainability. Doing so, they follow, for example, the SDGs number four, number 12, and number 13. A green and sustainable library includes also sustainable economy which means consumption restraint, circular and sharing economy practices. Here we have an example from Finland, where the Azikala Public Library implements a new service that puts into circulation tools and products to serve citizens, changing and accelerating consumption needs. Doing so, they follow the SDGs number 10, number 12, and number 13. A green and sustainable library includes also sustainable library services, as there are information, of course, shared spaces, devices, education, and last but not least, a positive carbon handprint. Here we see an example from the Portsmouth Public Library which has successfully collaborated with community partners to plan and implement educational programs called handprint parties that encourage positive action around a wide range of sustainability topics. Doing so, they help to achieve the sustainable development goals number 11 and 17. A green and sustainable library also includes social sustainability in terms of education, literacy, community engagement, cross-cultural diversity, social inclusion, participation, and reduce inequality. The public library but oldest law in Germany was the winner of the Ifla Green Library Award in 2017. The library had created a large program, beside others, a cooperation with the local food sharing group that offered rescued food from the local market in the library. Doing so, they followed the sustainable development goals number one, number two, number 12, and number 17. A green and sustainable library includes also environmental management, which means to deliberate environmental goals, to decrease the library's own negative impact on environment and the environmental policy, the implementation and the result of environmental work should be communicated to a broader audience. We have here an example from Ireland, where the University of Cork Wool Library published their energy environment program. And they follow with this program uh, the development goals number 17, number seven, and number 13. Running a green and sustainable library includes also that the commitment to general environmental goals and programs should be communicated. Like the SDGs, other environmental certificates and programs, the Paris Climate Agreement or others. For example, by displaying 
this filler poster prominently at the library entrance or on their homepage, positioning themselves as advocates for the agenda. This example comes from my home city, Berlin, the Free University. They have this poster on their homepage. More examples of green and sustainable libraries are published at IFLA's library map of the world. The map shows with the SDG stories worldwide examples of how libraries contribute to the implementation of the sustainable development goals in their communities. The libraries exist in very different contexts from large national or university library, public, school, or more. Here we have an example from Ukraine. The library created a program called Garbage Hero that educates children in eco thinking and recycling. And as you see, some SDG stories come along with the video. If you are looking for support, in positioning your library as a green and sustainable library, I invite you cordially to visit the website of Ansolib, IFLA section on environment, sustainability, and libraries. In addition to information about our goals, you will find here links to our conferences with conference reports, to the IFLA Green Library Award, to our freely accessible publications, resources, and last but not least to our newsletter coming soon, and of course, to our Facebook page. Ensolib's book projects are all available with open access. We published a Green Library checklist which is available in 26 languages, including Croatian, working of tools for green libraries. This is still a work in progress, but also coming soon. Ansolib supports the International Green Library Bibliography, which is also available with free open access. And last but not least, since 2016, Ansolip announces the annual IFLA Green Library Award competition. The award encourages green library initiatives in all kinds of libraries, no matter whether they are small or big. The announcement for 2022 is coming soon. Please join, submit your project, apply. We are waiting for you. And you, how is your library contributing to sustainable development? There is a calculator on the web where you can measure your own contributions in 10 languages. With the calculator, there is also a checklist which gives you some ideas how to contribute to each sustainable development goal. Now I come to the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. For more information, please visit Ansolib's website and enjoy our video. And now I wish you an inspiring conference with many ideas for your engagement in your local libraries, be it as role models, as educational partners, or as enablers, because sustainability is libraries' business. Thank you. Thank you, Petra, for your inspiring paper and a profound introduction introduction of, of the SDGs. I was especially glad to hear some reflections of the forthcoming 
criteria for IFLA Green Library Award criteria. So we are happy working with, with them. And I also liked very much the emphasis on, on reliable information, which is really one of the most important issues at our time when there is so much disinformation and even false news. Um, I think we are going to have questions and answers at the end of the session. Isn't that right? So we should go yes. to the... Yes. yes, that's right. All right, fine. So we go to our next speaker, Nicolas Skeller, who is Master of Art and Sustainability Educator and Project Manager for the, green, for the first Green Library in Sweden. Vexverket Malmö, Sweden. However, he is originally from uh, Zurich, Switzerland, where he has finished his personal degree in environmental science with specification in urban green spaces. Today, his title is Green Library Malmö, that is Krona Biblioteket which is in Swedish, which is a project that brings sustainable solutions to the library. This includes sustainability, literacy skills, as well as other activities and workshops. But let us let himself tell what is it all about. And Nicholas Alterfadik today, so if you have any question, you can send them on email. All right, but we are going to have a presentation. Yes. Yes. Hey. Fine. Hey. Thank you all for joining this presentation. My name is Nicholas. And I am the project leader of a project called Grüne Biblioteket, which in Swedish means the Green Library here in Malmö, Sweden. Um, I will give a short presentation about what we did and the ideas behind the project and hope that you will like it. I'll give you a short background info about the Växtverket, uh, the organization that has run the library project. Um, I put a picture of our team in here. Um, because it's, I think it's very special to mention that we are actually not librarians, none of us is, um, but rather we are a collective of landscape architects, pedagogues and gardeners that work here in Malmö and are organized as a non-profit association. Um, here you can see the whole organization, which all works on different projects, so not all of them actually work with Green Library. I have only worked with Vextverket since the fall of 2020. And so I'm fairly new, but the organization has existed since 2014 and works at the intersection of urban development, pedagogy and uh, gardening. We have multiple projects that work with community gardens um, or an adventure playground, but also we have since a year a new neighborhood garden that is an outdoor community center. And then, of course, the other big project, which is the Green Library. You can see who is actually involved in the project. On the left, you can see me, Nicholas. Uh, I, my background is uh, environmental and sustainability education. I did a master's degree on outdoor and sustainability education and have worked in the last six years within the field. So my interest is actually like the intersection between pedagogy and physical space. And then we have my colleagues, Adolfo Jopre, so who is a, a educated gardener and a leisure pedagogue and Lisa Magnusson, who is a landscape architect. And we three basically represent the team of the Green Library as a project. But of course, there is also the librarians of the library that we are actually hosting. As I mentioned before, we are actually not librarians. Um, and I think that makes a big difference. Then the project is actually not 
uh, did not get started by the library or librarians, but rather from our side. Um, as I started working for the organization and my master thesis that I wrote 2019 was on the educational potential of libraries to learn about sustainability. Through a string of coincidences, I ended up working for Vexdwecke, um, and I got to know the local library fairly well, uh, especially their uh, developer. And so when it came up that I actually have a background in education and that I wrote the master thesis about library, we came along that we will want to write the project description together. And he knew actually that there was one department of the city that was looking for pilot. Within a short time, we wrote a project, a project application, sent it in, and we got funded. And we were able to start the project rather surprisingly already in October 2020, uh, while Corona was still not on its peak and the library was still accessible for everybody. The money is uh, going to last for one and a half years, and so this will mean it will last till the middle of January. Currently, we are in the process of acquiring new funding um, through different on different levels, uh, but have not yet succeeded. So this means that while I'm currently recording this, the, in the last days, we are uh, talking to the library to see how we can wrap up the project or at least put it on pause. Um, because me and my colleague the, who works as a developer at the library, we're sure that the project will continue in some form, but maybe not in the constellation it is doing right now. My initial thoughts for the project and and for my math thesis um, stems from my background in uh, sustainability education. Uh, back in Switzerland, where I'm originally from, I worked as a manager for a nature education center for multiple years. Um, and uh, while I did like enjoy my work, I felt it was rather insufficient to meet uh, the needs to further educate the population about biodiversity loss or climate change, uh, based on the fact that most people visiting the Nature Education Center were people that were already familiar and sensitized to the topics of it. So then environmental education becomes a matter of social justice because everybody needs to have access to it. It's a necessity for a sustainable future. But at the same time, we are obviously lacking the spaces to provide these kind of services for the population. And so the cornerstones of this project are based on that Malmö and other cities have a growing multicultural urban population um, that has a very diversified use and access of public spaces and learning facilities, that we need an urgent transformation of our society to stay within the 1.5 degree scenario of the IPCC, and that popular education is an absolute necessity if this transition ought to be just and equitable. And so we need new learning and meeting spaces to facilitate this kind of pedagogy and to empower this change that needs to come from all, all spheres of society. And this is basically why I chose to do a project about libraries, because as you all know, only the library has such a diversified user base as no other cultural space. And especially libraries such this one here that I am uh, hosted uh, in Sophie Lund, which is a economically low neighborhood with uh, very different levels of income, they are especially important. And so to create a network of green learning and meeting spaces based on the library system, that is what the project is about, to test the prototype of a collaboration between the public and uh, a small organization as ours. To give a bit uh, of a narrow overview, I wanted also to share how the backdrop here in Sweden looks like. Um, while internationally, the Green Library is a topic that is trending, that has been been worked on since at least 2016 through the first Green Library Award. Um, 
and that also you all probably know. Um, here in Sweden, there is actually not that much that has happened on a systemic or more structural level. Um, of course, you have the occasional libraries or the occasional librarians that are very committed to sustainability and implement the SDGs or in, implement the uh, uh, activities or changes to their uh, library. But there is no network or there is no uh, bigger project going on. So we can actually claim that this project was to test the first green library in Sweden. Um, on the Nordic scale, it looks a little bit different. In 2020, there was the first uh, Nordic Libraries Annual uh, Conference that was uh, under the subtitle Towards Sustainable Futures. Um, the conference is still available, available on video, able to attend. I went through the videos, I of Sweden. There was basically a researcher from Borås University that was uh, talking about uh, two libraries, when otherwise there was uh, no Swedish participant presenting. And so this was, of course, also an interesting fact that we had to work with, that we are basically the only ones doing it this, on this scale. When I wrote the project description, it was important to me to um, showcase that the library as a democratic institution has a very central role to play when it comes to open up the discourse of sustainability. And that is because even though the, this trajectory might seem very um, linear, it is actually not. It, the road towards sustainability is highly disputed and is highly unclear. And there are different uh, ideologies uh, crave for different solutions. And to make this, uh, make this, uh, these different positions accessible, the, the library uh, as an open democratic platform plays an important role. Um, and so here, for example, we talk about, uh, uh, which means that you use this for the same processes where you have resources that are more in uh, line with nature and biodiversity, for example, or sufficiency means that you can um, or share more. And then, of course, you can have sustainability or you can have a grass to sustainability can take individuals and uh, choices or this to be discussed which way forward we want to take. Here, the library is one of the few institutions that actually can open up such a space. And so for me in my project to allow this diversity of ideas, it was important to not use our uh, time to talk to people about uh, that they should buy organic or that they should buy uh, secondhand, but rather with our time in the library, we started opening up possibilities for people all people to participate um, in sustainable activities without the uh, necessity for them to change their consumer habits. So instead of telling them to buy organic seeds and start gardening, we would open up a seed library. So to give them more resources that are shared within the library. And I think that's very important to me, very clear, because as an educator um, that wants to create uh, a sustainable and just society, we cannot just work on the in individual level and individual consumer habits. We have to um, on community base with different abilities, access to resources can participate in this transformation. So here um, I will go a bit more into the practicalities of the project, um, which part of the library actually worked with. Um, I want to mention two models that have been influential for the project as well. Um, on the right upper corner, you can see a model for a concept that is called um, environmental citizenship, which is basically uh, one of the goals of uh, sustainability education. Um, and that's rather, it's a 
it's a goal that like tries to put together uh, individuals consumer choices so that the individual becomes uh, conscious about their impact as a consumer but also as a citizen and so therefore the citizenship like so it tries to find a, a combination of a col that uh, to empower the individual to do their individual actions in a private sphere such as consumer habits but at the same time it also takes into account that the individual has a political power or uh, can be part of a a, a broader change uh, that needs also to be addressed and the individual needs to be empowered to take that democratic space as well uh, and the lower bottom is uh, one that you probably were familiar with it's um, um uh, for room model of uh, libraries um, and that is that the library can be uh, an overlap of four different uh, spheres uh, one of them is the learning space and then a meeting space uh, a performative space and an inspiration space and i mentioned these two models because as said they have like uh, played a part in the project description originally and they have uh, been playing a part in how we looked at the, the activities and uh, the parts of the library that we actually tried to work with on the left side you can see um, different dimensions that we addressed in the project um, the first one which is uh, the built environment is actually a part of many green library projects or is one at least in the early iterations of green the green library movement as far as i at or as far as i looked at the resources um, and so we the environment but only to early mostly uh it encompasses of the library we were hosted um, we developed it uh, with uh, a temporary garden and meeting sitting options to make it more of like a meeting place. So this whole concept called place making came here into play. Um, and they also can become a space for uh, like our workshops. But then the content, we worked together with uh, the librarians that were responsible for the whole uh, the, the media. And so we worked together with them and looked at what kind of topics uh, within sustainability they could uh, buy or like or um, purchase. And so we gave them different ideas and uh, and included also, for example, uh, board games or uh, children's books. So it was a quite a wide array of uh, media that uh, we were able to look at. Then the next one, the events is uh yeah it's similar we work together with the responsible librarian on see what set up together work within the work with the sdgs and so for example participate with the library in the global sharing day in november or in the international repair day and uh, that worked out quite well but unfortunately one of the parts that had to be gravidly um, decimated under corona um, the libraries in sweden were not closed but they were not open either so people were allowed to come and leave and take books but there were no these no workshops under that time and also no uh, chairs so that people could really not be in the library as a meeting space with uh, space i mean that um, the library as a physical space became uh, more accessible to other groups. So for example, the repair cafe that I mentioned, there was a separate group that we invited basically to use the library for their events. And this uh, was actually planned to be done with more organizations, but because basically three quarters of the project, we were not able to have host events. In the end, it was rather difficult to organize many on the short notice. But uh, yeah, the repair cafe is a very good example of how the space that the library can be used without much uh, extra work by just uh, making it more accessible. Extra work by just uh, making it more accessible. With the services, um, I'm talking about the, for example, the loaning system for the tools that the library already had, but that we expanded a bit. 
um, or that we built up um, a seed bank, a seed library for people to swap and take seeds so to grow at home. Um, we also have a, a, a table for plant swap, like a permanent plant exchange that people can take part in. Um, and so to use the library and develop um, new, even small services that people get people involved without the use to actually spend a lot of money. Last one is uh, popular education. In Sweden, uh, it's called the Folkbildning, and it's its own concept of pedagogy uh, that is uh, has to tries to have a very low threshold and try to involve as many different groups as possible. And so here, for example, every Tuesday afternoon, we offer the kids workshops like uh, crafts and but also upcycling or even like gardening. Or in the summer, the kids helped us to take care of the outdoor garden together um, or watered. Or on Wednesdays, we invited the adults visitors to join us, um, take care of the plants inside. Uh, we could show them tips and tricks um, and how to take care of their house plants, but also to show them around the library and the different things we set up there. And so it was more like a very casual drop in, but that would allow us to get to know the visitors better and to talk to them about sustainability topics on a very low and introductionary level. Um, and that did work quite well, even though it was maybe not a lot of visitors all the time, but it was much more a qualitative uh, thing and it was quantitative. And last are the librarians. And with that, I mean the librarians as a target group, because the librarians, they're of course, uh, they are the mediators between the library and the guests, but at the same time, they also function as multiplicators and are therefore very important for any kind of educational effort that uh, wants to work well within the library. Um, and that means, for example, that we did uh, multiple workshops with the li librarians where we looked at the sustainable development goals and the topics to pick up, or also we did um, early breakfast seminars where we invited different speakers to talk about their efforts in their library and uh, how to implement different sustainability measures. And that also gave the librarians a new sense of what their library actually can be or what kind of topics can be addressed within the library. And here I want to say that it becomes really clear that we as an external organization that we're working together with a library work mostly with landscape architecture and pedagogy. And so these two topics were, in a sense, very strongly. And I'm sure that if another library would work with another organization, but do a similar concept, of course, the outcome would be very different. But uh, this worked well, especially because the physical space adaptation um, was still possible even under Corona, because even though we couldn't have any workshops, we could still use the space for gardening or like building small prototypes and the people could still, in the 20 minutes they visited the library, they could still look at it and maybe read a small info flyer or they could talk to us really quickly and ask us about it. And so to combine these two dimensions worked out really well for us and we got a lot of positive feedback. In the next three slides, uh, we'll go through some actual pictures, footage of the project and just explain in a bit more detail of what we did actually here. Um, so on the first slide, uh, you can see from the left corner is uh, one of the growing techniques that we tried. Uh, we grew uh, oyster mushrooms. Uh, right next to it, you can see that we grew um, hydroponic salad. Um, we chose to do a lot of hydroponic growing because we, of course, were inside the library. And um, so we tried to not get it too dirty, of course, and so hydroponics seemed like a good option. And also, of course, because people are not familiar with it that much, so it was very much an experiment for us, but also to show that there's other ways of growing food out there. Um, in the lower left corner, you can see my colleague, um, how he's actually pre preparing um, salads in a ceiling bed. Um, this is in the creative corner of the library that is used for crafts and other activities. And then right next to it, there is uh, one of the corners that we could use um, to grow salads. Um, here, hydroponic salads and um, normal salads mixed. Um, and the, the big picture is uh, a test that we run one time. We uh, got a, 
a gardening dome. These domes are used as like greenhouses in organic gardening often. And we purchased the kit and were experimenting with if we wanted to set it up inside, um, which we, in the end we didn't do, uh, but because the library staff was not very happy about it. Um, the problem was, of course, that we as an external actor were just occupying niches within the library, um, expanding slowly from them. And this, yeah, is a quite a big project, of course. But uh, on the bottom one picture, you can see one of the activities that we held. We made a paper out of uh, the, sh the paper from the shredder machine that the library used. So we took all the scraps, blended them in a blender, mixed them with water, and then together with the kids, we used it to make new paper. And on the bottom right corner, you can see what is called compost masker, which is uh, basically like composting worms. So we had a small composting system inside the library that we could show to the visitors. Um, on this slide, you can see two of the workshop setups that we were running. Um, because the library was still uh, inaccessible for people to visit on a longer period and we were not allowed to hold workshops inside the library, uh, we came up with a solution to build a rollable workshop table that we could use as a mobile workstation. And we used it on the left, as you can see, for children's workshop uh, where they could try gardening, where they could plant seeds, or where we would build stuff out of old milk cartons. So quite a diverse range of things that we did. And on the right, we tried the more adult-centered uh, workshop that didn't work quite as well because we did it mostly during the summer holidays. Uh, it was basically like a, a pop-up uh, builders workshop where people could come with their own ideas and we would give materials and we would give some input or we would design something together from uh, scrap materials um, and the table proved to be quite uh, efficient and versatile it was very practical because we could roll it into the middle of the access path of the library so people would basically pass us by and have to interact with us to go to the library um, but of course, always with considerations to wheelchairs and other uh, other uh, things that had to go through. But uh, yeah, it was a it's a was a very big drawing point for the people to come and see what's happening there because it's not every day that you see like a big table outside of the library with lots of stuff on it. Uh, so yeah, that was definitely one of the more successful experiments that we did. Here you can see two further projects that we were doing. Um, on the left is a vertical hydroponic system that we were setting up inside the library and that was uh, also using artificial lights and we grew basil, uh, pak choy and uh, kale in it. And on the right side you can see like what we did as a, a small herb spiral that was basically uh, it's like a permaculture project where you build a, a elevated platform that slowly slopes down so that different herbs that need different dryness and different temperatures have a, all a specific uh, small niche ecosystem that works best for them. So the top herbs, when you water them, they dry the quickest because the water runs down. And so that's the herbs that like it the most dry. And so further down, you have the herbs that need more uh, humidity or need uh, more water. And so you create this little patch of um, yeah, of a dry soil and a wet soil, and that allows different herbs to thrive. Um, and that was actually quite a simple task. It didn't take a lot of materials, it didn't take a lot of time, and still it made the space out there very much more pleasant. On this slide, you can also see um, some indoor and outdoor projects um, on the top left corner is one of the first things we tried um, it was basically a rollable grass mat um, the idea was that uh, the visitors if they would sit in the library could put their feet on it and enjoy um, sitting inside while having your feet in the grass um, and for whatever reason we didn't really figure out what uh, it worked super nice in the beginning as you can see the grass was very green 
but at some point it started dying off and become rather unpleasant. So unfortunately, we did not uh, continue it, um, but it was definitely an, uh, a starting point for many conversations to see to just a green patch of grass inside the library that actually could be rolled around. Uh, and the bottom left, we were growing tomatoes in an old clothing rack that we found in one of the storage rooms of the library. And we put it with a lamp, and so we were growing small tomato plants um, in between the bookshelves. In the middle is a, a book stack of, for example, the books that we ordered together with the librarian, um, that one of the librarian uh, took a, a photo shoot of um, to put it on social media. Um, so it's a lot of English books, um, but also with blended with a lot of Swedish books, of course. Um, and the topics range from um, environmentalism to um, cookbook, green cookbooks to um, how to ferment or DIY books and uh, plant plant encyclopedia. And so it was a quide range of topics and quite a range of uh, formats. And on the right, you can see the outdoor space um, as we actually, after we started turning it into a garden. Um, so <laughs> it looks like actually not that much on this picture, but we had about 10 different uh, gardening beds uh, in these, uh, these transportation pallets and a small uh, gardening, a small uh, plant house behind uh, this uh, this vertical thing. Um, and the question is often why we didn't do stuff in the middle because there is so much space. But the problem is that the, this is um, from the from the owner of the property. It was a requirement that we could not blow, block the access road to the building um, because, of course, it needs to be a fire. A fi for fire hazard, it needs to be accessible for the firefighters. And so we did have occasional blockages of the middle street, but then it was always uh, things on wheels that we could move away out of the way after the after we finished or in the evening. So this space was basically accessible at all times for vehicles, which of course um, is in a way makes it less uh, cozy, makes it less of a space, but it's still better compromise to have the things on the side and to have uh, temporary things in the middle that you could just move out, move out away than not have anything at all. Uh, and before that, it was just basically a gray, um, a gray concrete uh, space. Like there was no greenery, there was uh, no plants. And so this was definitely a big update that especially during the summer when people still couldn't go into the library was enjoyed by many people because there were a couple of benches outside that sit um, with a lot of people coming for lunch breaks. And so the outside of the library just became also that this meeting space. And with that, people were also reading all the signs that we put on different things and all the information uh, signs that we put on things. So they would actually also read them and look at the compost and look at the different techniques. And so that was definitely a good side effect of a nice space. Um, on this last slide, you can see the top left corner a uh, participatory structure that we built. Um, it was basically asking what is the future library or what is the library of the future? And some follow-up questions on the medium-sized papers. And they could people write down their ideas of what kind of services they want to see in the library, what kind of uh, topics they want to see present. And um, yeah, it worked fairly well. Um, it got, did not get too many responses, but it was also just a test to see if we can somehow overcome the lack of contact with the visitors due to the pandemic. Um, and then in the top right and the lower left, these two structures were built by our project money, but we uh, engaged, we uh, basically hired professional uh, carpenters to temporarily overtake some of the extra spaces in the outside. So basically there's this is a small wall um, and we built like seating so people could use them to hang out there. And on the, the lower one is actually a blocking a part of the cycling uh, cycling parking temporarily. So we took away, we basically built it on top of the cycling parking because there is still like 30, 40 places around 
um, and the people could use it to sit in the sun uh, or the kids could use it as a like, small playground. And on the right hand is a, a seating structure that we built. It's basically reused tires that we fixed up uh, to use as uh, seats. And uh, it's next to the entrance of the other facility that shares the same area, which is like a youth center for music and arts. And so this was uh, quite frequent, quite frequently used by the youth in the in that center. And so we basically just tried to put more seating in the in the outer space of the library, which was uh, very important because there was almost nothing before. And we tried to do it in a way that would show that you can use a lot of materials in a way people are maybe not expecting. Um, yeah, and then we slowly are coming to some of the last slide. Um, I just wanted to say, like, the the project was very strongly inhibited in like half the time from Corona, um, but still, um, I want to say that we had some uh, successes. While we did not do a proper study of them, of course, so this might be anecdotal, um, we still can see a certain. Uh, feedback or we can talk to we have a certain uh, inputs from outside that we got and so one of the things that definitely changed even in this short period of time is the librarians and the guests perception of the library like it's the librarians of course seeing that the library has a, a very big potential for uh, for future topics and for sustainability as a topic in general and then of course also the guests perception of what the library actually is and what it can provide for a community. Um, then once we, all, we were able to hold workshops, we had an increasing number of children and parents participating in them. Um, we addressed mostly uh, children up to the age of 12 and sometimes very young ones that came with the parents. But the number uh, keep, kept growing and is still keeping growing for the Tuesday workshops. Um, and so we can see that this regular engagement really makes the children also come back. And they were interested in the topics with, that we were providing, even though they were maybe not the usual topics they would do um, in arts and crafts. And then, of course, the physical change of the library that we facilitated with the project. Um, inside, we talk about all the greenery that we uh, that we arranged and that we got um, also like the hydroponic systems and the lights that has a big, had especially a big effect in the winter when we had all the plant lights on and it was actually very bright in the library which a lot of people thought of very positively um, but of course also the outside space as I've just shown you which was a big part of the project due to the pandemic um, and then the people inspired um, as I said we don't have any actual numbers but we people come on a regular basis and tell us that they either started trying the hydroponic system at home in a small scale or that they used some of the seeds that uh, we provided them for in the seed library and i also can see that the books that we are that we bought in or that we purchased are uh, a lot of them are uh, on rotation quite regularly so there is definitely a a need and definitely a, like there's definitely a market for the things we provided in this project and then, of course, um, to have us three people present uh, in a lot of days, uh, like to have this extra manpower basically in the library, it allowed us to uh, create a local network because the corner of the city that the library is sitting, um, there is a lot of schools around. There is like after school care, there is a elderly home, and there is a, yeah, so there is a lot of these kinds of types of public institutions around and only because we were there for a full year and we were there actually multiple days a week we were able to slowly build connections to them and see also like if there's anything we can do for them and so one of the projects that will spin off of this uh, green library project is that the elderly care center right next to us um, will wants to do a project together with us to build a, a chicken coop like a chicken house in their garden which we will uh, we, we are starting now to put together as a project and so i think next to the physical aspects and the pedagogy the actual 
time of us spent in the library is the other, the third, one of the three big things. Um, and of course, that is a very privileged position. Not each library can have just three more people. And I'm fairly aware of that limitation of the project. Um, and we are we were trying to address it in a follow-up project that we did not get the funding for, but we still hope we will get it in the future. But of course, also the international network, as I'm here presenting to you this project that just started a year ago that I would not have expected to, yeah, to do any waves, to do any, but it did um, in Sweden, in Malmö, but also internationally. Um, I've been talking to people in Norway, in Iceland, in uh, in Denmark, but now also to you here in Zagreb. And I've been, yeah, and so there, there is apparently like a growing number of libraries or librarians that uh, want to be inspired, that need maybe some input, that need some ideas, or they need to work together with other organizations such as us. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful to see. I'm very glad that I did this project. I'm doing this project. Um, and I feel we're doing it at the right time. And um, on the right side, you can we can also see two examples of actually um, like gratification that we got. So I decided that the project should participate in a in a contest, so to say, or like in a in an award. And that's the Transformative Action Award, which is uh, handed out by different uh, organizations um, that basically shows different sustainability actions in the urban space. And while we did not win the prize, we got a special mention for our project. Um, and that is pretty big. Um, this is a European platform that we're talking about here um, with many hundreds of projects applying and our little project in Malmö got a mention. So it seems it is a, a rather a good idea or the, at least the concept was a good concept at least in this competition. And on the bottom one, we can also see like uh, uh, academic interest. So SLU is the Agricultural University of Sweden. And here we have a bachelor thesis that was written about the library um, of a student. And the title says the Green Library as an urban common um, with mul many fun multifunctional urban common. And uh, yeah, and so these things clearly show me and show us as a project team that uh, this project has big potential and it should but it should not be just uh, pushed by individual libraries or individual individual librarians while this is definitely important it should be as a collaborative effort between civil society actors and the libraries um, that that can actually help each other out on this topic and it should be pushed on a structural systemic level that tr to um, transform at least parts of the libraries or to develop at least parts of the libraries into green libraries. Um, yeah. But uh, I also want to be transparent and uh, tell you about the things that maybe didn't work out that well or that need more refinement. And so here are lessons learned or um, the compatibility um, and here i mean like the, the working together with the librarians because we as a small organization Vextverket, we have a very different structure as the library we're different it systems um, we have different meeting times and so to make these two organizations work together that is something that definitely needs more work and more improvement than i thought initially um, similarly to the temporalities, by that I mean that the library we worked with or the libraries in Malmö, they plan on a yearly or two year, uh, bi-yearly basis. So they have actually, even on Corona, a yearly plan where they um, lay out all their topics or lay out their events. And um, we, on the other hand, we came in on a short notice. Um, then we had to organize everything rather quickly because we were not it was an experiment and so these two temporalities they crashed with each other with each other sometimes and um, that's definitely something that would need to be addressed in a follow-up project so to say that the project needs at least two or three years um, to build up to get into the rhythm of the library um, and then accessibility um, on the corona 
we were not able to hold physical meetings or to hold physical events. Uh, and we got uh, asked multiple times to do online content, but uh, we did not do that. We did refuse that because the problem is the idea was that the project is in the library so that it becomes accessible to as many people as, pro po as possible. And to do move content online on Facebook that um, actually exclude already quite a bit use a big user group especially in garage at the library that we are were because there were a lot of elderly people a lot of people from low economic groups um, and so these would all not have access to the things we did and so instead of moving everything online as soon as it was possible we moved everything outside and uh, tried to keep the corona rule or to keep uh, the uh, keep everybody safe by doing it on the outside and doing it in smaller groups um and then the processes and structures as the first point like um how do we meet with the librarians how do we talk to them what are the structures they are using what are our structures and how do they fit together when do we talk about what they want, how do they get their input into the project, like these types of connections, they need to be addressed very clearly and they need to be um, they need to be worked on and they did not always work out very well. One of the biggest issues we had was, for example, uh, communication. How do we communicate um, with each other, but also how do we communicate with the public? Um, and then collaboration, um, we actually had planned it from the beginning of the project to co collaborate with many more organizations in Malmö um, that were working with sustainability topics. Uh, due to the pandemic, it was not possible for a very long time. And once it was possible, the, it was basically such a short notice and such a short period of time till the end of the project that many organizations, they were not able to suddenly um, sit with us and organize something. So that, of course, is a, is a problem that was not necessarily our fault, but it's still something that would have to be considered in the future project. How do we get the organizations into the library to partake in the project of the Green Library? And so that's already the end of the presentation. Um, I thank you so much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed it. And I could give a short overview of what we were doing here in the last year. Um, and please feel free to contact me if you have any more questions or if you want to talk about the project. I'm very happy to answer them and talk more about it. Um, and otherwise, I wish you a, a, a nice conference. Thank you very much. Right. We sent our greetings to Malama, to Nicholas. Thank you for very interesting presentation. Quite many have already commented that there are great ideas. Yes. And also Malama might point out that sustainability can be also fun. It's not always only serious thing. Uh, there were a couple of things I would like to, to point out. One of them is, well, of course, that Nicholas didn't mention the SDGs very many times, but of course, the project was in, in accordance with, with SDGs. Uh, the second thing is that quite often we do things in libraries without noting that this is actually sustainability work that we are already doing it without recognizing that we could put this forward as, as a sustainable, as a criteria or, or action for sustainable libraries. Um, but then on the other side, uh, this I recognize from, from, from Finland, and maybe it applies to other Nordic countries too, is that, that we often think that we already are sustainable, so we don't promote sustainability 
more. We say that, okay, we have circulated our collections for hundreds of years. And in Nordic countries, we have very effective waste management, for example. We don't have need to educate people to sort their wastes. And so we think that we have already done it. We don't need to do anything else. Uh, that's why that, that may be one reason why there isn't more crime, green libraries in, in, in Nordic countries. Malmo is the first one in, in, in Sweden. And it may be that librarians haven't realized that we have to be more active, even if we have the basic things in, in order. Right, but now we are going to the Croatian presentations. Our next speaker is Ivan Kraljevic. He's library advisor at the University Library in Ula, where he has been working since 2002. He is also president of the working group for Green Libraries of the Croatian Library Association. And he has been the initiator and leader of the first and most active Green Library project in Croatia. And he will tell us about Green Library, 10 years of Green Library in Istria, and seven years of the working group for Green Libraries. I guess the title tells it all, and we are going to have an interesting case study. Ivan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Harry. Green Library. 10 years of the Green Library in Istria and seven years of the Working Group for Green Libraries. My name is Ivan Kraljevic. I am a librarian advisor, Green Library project manager and president of the Working Group for Green Libraries. I come from Pula, Croatia. Do we want to be as Agent Smith define us? Instead of an introduction, I want to read to you a speech from the movie The Matrix in which artificial intelligence explains how it sees the human species. Agent Smith, I like to share a revelation that I've had during my time here. It came to me when I tried to classify your species and I realized that you are not actually mammals. Every mammal on this planet instinctively develops a natural equilibrium with the surrounding environment, but you humans do not. You move to an area and you multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed and the only way you can survive is to spread to another area. There is another organism on this planet that follows the same pattern. Do you know what it is? A virus. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague. Should we be worried? Since the middle of the 20th century, we have been recording extremely unfavorable changes in the environment caused by the massive increase in industrialization, international trade and human population. The economy is generally based on non-ethical and long-term unsustainable production that results with the huge quantities of waste, pollution and endangering life on the planet. The public interest is less and less protected against the private one, causing the problems that are manifested on a planetary scale. Numerous species are threatened. Human health is at risk, but also the health of society as such. The man owns activities for profit, jeopardize their own, but also the future of their descendants. We look to Glasgow with the high expectations. But the political global response to the crisis still protects profits and dirty industry more than the future of our children. What now? To repair the damage, we must urgently act wisely. What is required is education that will alter the human relationship to nature from parasitic to symbiotic or from unsustainable to sustainable. Why me? famous quote from Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world. 
famous quote from Lao Tse says, a journey of thousand miles begins with a single step. We have only one planet on which we can live and act. Without our planet we don't have a platform on which we can exist and act and that is why it is crucial that everyone does everything they can to preserve the possibility of being at all. Why me personally? Ever since I was a child, I often thought about the meaning of life. Later, I fell in love with the philosophy and graduated in philosophy at the Faculty of Philosophy in Zagreb. I often discussed with friends about, my, uh, about the unsustainability of human actions and that w uh, what we as a human species should change. After many discussions, I have realized that we are all too deep in the comfort zone of theory and speculations and that we actually either do very little or nothing at all. That is why I decided to operate within my business environment and during my presidency of the Association of Librarians of Istria, I started the Green Library, the first such project in Croatia. Why libraries? Every one of us uh, can make a difference and libraries have to be the lighthouses and nurseries of knowledge that will sow the seed of ideas for a sustainable and healthy society that will take care of our only habitat, planet Earth. The Green Library is a project of the Librarian Association of Istria, first initiated in 2011 in Pula. From the beginning, libraries in Pazin, Pula, Umag, Novigrad, Labin, Poreć, Buzet, Rovinj and the Jure Dobrila University of Pula were involved in the project, together with many other local organizations. This is the first such project in Croatia, the longest lasting and also the most implemented project in the last 10 years. Numerous collaborations have been established with schools, universities, institutes, open colleges, cinemas, associations and civic initiatives. Part of the lectures organized within the Green Library project are now included in the five co courses at the Faculty of Economic and Tourism, Dr. Mio Mirkovic in Pula. It is interesting to mention that the civic initiative called Pula in Trans Transition was formed within the Green Library project. For a while, the members gathered in the city workshop and uh, in the university library in Pula with the guiding idea, if we wait for the state, it may be too late. If we act alone, it may be too little. If we act together, it may be just in time. Main goal of the Green Library project. Educating the public, spreading the awareness of sustainable society and necessity of nature protection through Green Library webpage, documentary projections, lectures, panel discussions and book promotions with ecological topics. The logo of the project was created in collaboration with the Zagreb academic painter Thea Hatadi. Since the project began 2011, which was International Year of the Forests, the tree on the logo has imposed itself as a logical choice. An open book uh, merging with the treetops symbolize libraries and yellow and the blue represent the sun and water. The sun, water and tree represent life and the book represents the learning and cognition of a sustainable system that does not endanger life on the planet. From the very beginning of the project there is a Facebook page where photos of almost all implemented activities are available. The official website of the project was published in 2011, a few months after the Facebook page. The project was received especially well in the county of Istria and its activities were well attended in the whole period. In 10 years of the project, 180 public activities were organized with the participation of about 8,000 users. Lectures are mostly held in the Pula at the University Library or at the Faculty of Economics and Tourism. The lecturers are top Croatian experts in the field of sustainable society and environmental protection, coming from Croatian universities, institutes and activist eco associations. Uh, for example, the lecture by Corrado Korlevic was attended by 300 people.
This is a list of all lectures from various fields such as biodiversity, transition to a non-fossil society, healthy food and organic farming, environmental protection, fair trade, degrowth, ethics, permaculture, conflict of public and private interest, waste products, energy sources, sustainable society, climate change, ecological architecture, good economy, ethical bank, etc. Some projections, some projections are organized in libraries, but the most visited are the ones held in cooperation with Cinema Valley in Pula. For example, Film Elemental had uh, three projections that were visited by 600 people. This is a list of all the films shown in the project. Panel discussions. As a part of the project, six panel discussions were held on specific environmental topics with the participation of several speakers and the general public. Topics were City of Pula on solar power, irresistibly lucrative hunger, hidden costs of thermal power plant Plomin C, the impact of today's society on health and the environment, Changes introduced by the new law on maritime property and seaports and fatal chain of coal. The first two panels were organized by the Association of Librarians of Istria independently as a part of the Green Library project. Uh, the association also participated in the other panels as a co-organizer. 8,000 users. Project users are mostly pupils and the students, uh, but also the general public. The Eastern model of the Green Library has encouraged the spread of green programs at the national level in all types of libraries. Today, uh, they are implemented in numerous libraries in Croatia and the phrase Green Library is widely known. Working Group for Green Libraries at the 39th Assembly of the Croatian Library Association held in Split in 2014, a working group for green libraries was formed at the Section for Management and Technology. The founding members were Edita Bacic, Melinda grubišić reiter Diana sabolovic Krajina, Petar Lukacic and me as a president. Objective to raise the story to the national level according to the Istrian model by involving as many interested libraries as possible. Specific goals in 2015 conduct an online survey among Croatian librarians to find interested librarians to participate, give lectures on the Green Library project and creating a network of interested librarians through social networks. Survey analysis shows librarians are interested in networking as a part of the Green Library project Environmental awareness has already been developed among librarians along with the desire to participate in developing and offering environmental topics to their users. Numerous presentations of the Green Library project concept were held. The purpose of the lecture on a Green Library is to raise awareness of the need to be involved in such projects, motivate librarians and share experience and knowledge about project implementation. The article Project Green Library in Croatia by Petar Lukacic and me was presented at the IFLA World Congress Dynamic Libraries Access Development and Transformation in Cape Town in 2015. In May 2015, the working group launched the joint action Let's Start Green Libraries as a kind of motivation for libraries to plan, plan their further independent activities based on the existing project. The action starts with the film screenings from 2nd E, the Environmental Film Festival, the screenings of which was made possible by Zelena Akcija. 67 libraries got involved. Zelena Akcija is an environmental association that has been collaborating with the Working Group for Green Libraries regularly every year 
since 2015 by giving some of the films from the Environmental Film Festival to the Working Group for Green Libraries, which shows them through the joint action uh, Let's Start Green Libraries. Through this collaboration, a large part of the festival's program is found in libraries across Croatia, where libraries themselves organize screenings and selections of films. So far, six national campaigns Let's Start Green Libraries have been held, involving 226 libraries and library associations, which had the choice of 54 different environmental films. This is the seventh year that we have uh, launched uh, an annual action, and the seventh action, Let's Start Green Libraries, is currently underway. I hope this cooperation with Zelena Aktia will last for many years to come. Cooperation with the National and University uh, Library in Zagreb, uh, with the Working Group, uh, began with my visit as President of the Working Group for Green Libraries at the Round Table on Green Libraries held on November 8, 2016, organized by the National and University Library in Zagreb with my presentation Green Libraries in Croatia. The roundtable was followed by concrete cooperation in organizing two major events dedicated to green libraries, namely the Green Festival held in 2016 and the first international conference on green libraries held in the 2018. Green Festival, from 2nd to 8th September 2017, the National and University Library in Zagreb hosted the Green Festival an event aimed at promoting and popularizing sustainable development, organic food production, nature protection, alternative energy sources, and the green technologies and innovation. The following year, the National and University Library in Zagreb won fourth place, place in a competition for a Green Library Award of the International Federation of Library Association and Institutions for 2018 for the Green Festival, which it organized in cooperation with the Working Group for Green Libraries. From 8 to 10 November 2018, the first international conference on Green Libraries was held at the National and University Library in Zagreb, organized by the National and University Library and the Working Group for Green Libraries. The library community, but also scientists, experts and environmental activists from 20 countries around the world presented themselves at the conference with the presentations in the field of green library development, but also ecology in general and exchange experiences and examples of good practice. Sustainable pa Panels Let's Go Green. The cooperation of the Working Group with the National and University Library is also carried out through the program Sustainable Panels Let's Go Green. Uh, these are panels within Project Green Library for, for Green Croatia, which are implemented in the National and University Library in the spirit of ongoing commitment to environmental issues. So far, several panels have been held, initiated and designed by colleague Anna Rubic, who was also the president of the Working Group for Green Libraries for one term. Conclusion Libraries can play a very significant role in acquiring the knowledge, skills and competencies necessary for critical thinking and action that will result in sustainable society, an inclusive society and preserved environment. The Green Library project inspired other libraries and initiated the launch of the Working Group for Green Libraries at the Croatian Library Association, which organized the Green Festival, the first international confer conference on green libraries, and continuously organized a joint action Let's Start Green Libraries and Sustainable Panels Let's Go Green. Act now. How are we going to explain to our children what was economically cost-effective if there will be no workable piece of land, clean air and water to drink? It is an indisputable fact that we have only one planet to live and work on. Our duty and priority, but also a matter of survival, is to change the current paradigm and learn to live sustainably and globally responsible. The contribution to such a change should become a mission of libraries. 
creation libraries are just on that path through networking in a chain of green libraries. In these 10 years of engaging in activism through the Green Library, I see a change, but I think we have spent all the credit to change so slowly. Thank you all and be the change you want to see. Thank you, Ivan. You have been doing a great job, I have to say. You were also raising a big questions and maybe the most profound question is that do my deeds have any effects when the environmental crimes are done by somebody else in somewhere, somewhere elsewhere? And you were also offering the basic answers to these questions that collaboration and positive activism do have effects, but also that libraries can show the way that we can be examples. So it's really very encouraging. Thank you very much, Ivan. And we have to go on now. Our last speaker will be Maria Simonovic, who is a senior libra librarian President of the Commission for Advocacy of the Croatian Library, as well as a coordinating coordinator at the European Document Documentation Center at Faculty of Economics at Business, University of Zagreb. Her paper will deal about how Library associations advocate activities in the context of sustainable development. Hence, we will approach sustainable development from an other viewpoint. The focus is now in more institutional. And the floor is yours, Maria. Thank you all. Uh, I will now share my presentation. Hello all, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, I will be talking about library associations, advocacy activities in the context of uh, sustainable development. Uh, so, first of all, uh, let me have short introduction to the presentation. I will be talking about the um, Croatian Library Association Commission for the Advocacy, short intro with historical preview of uh, the activities of the Commission. I will be talking more about the uh, big project of uh, Croatian Library Association called uh, Croatian Library Days. Uh, I, I know that all of you are very familiar with this uh, Day. And uh, next, I will be talking about national advocacy projects within uh, Creation Library Association Commission for the Advocacy. I will be talking about uh, national and international projects. And uh, at the end, I will uh, be talking about uh, regional advocacy project uh, of uh, Re regional uh, library association, Zagreb Library Association, and its uh, working group, uh, Cyclo Librarians. So uh, let's start. Creation Library Association Commission for Advocacy uh, was founded in 2000, uh, 20, uh, 2003 as a working group, and later on uh, it becomes a commission for the advocacy. Uh, priority task of uh, commission was to educate, uh, firstly educate members of librarian community, and uh, the goal is to promote, prepare, uh, and communicate different advocacy activities, projects, and strategies on, uh, of course, regional, national, and international level. So, uh, first national advocacy steps was uh, educational ad activities for the librarians. Uh, 
members of commission presented the educational workshop within a creation training center for continuing education of librarians called CSSU uh, regarding advocacy, such as a basic course for uh, advocacy and later on advocacy one and advocacy two as an advanced uh, workshop uh, regarding advocacy teams. Members of the commission uh, also participated actively in uh, on uh, different uh, library congresses pre presenting uh, workshops and roundtables at the uh, advocacy subject such as fundraising, public relations in library and different advocacy library projects. One uh, very important document was also produced by the Commission and its uh, first creation library associations advocacy strategy from 2008 to 2010. Uh, now we have uh, nine uh, advocacy strategies and we are currently working on the uh, new one. Uh, so let's go on. Uh, I will be uh, talking more about uh, Creation uh, Library Day, Libraries Day. Uh, Creation Library Association, uh, especially Commission for the Advocacy, established Creation Libraries Day uh, with the aim of uh, better visibility and recognition of the libraries and library activities in public. Uh, the date was uh, 11th 11th, uh, the day when uh, Croatian uh, government founded first librarian law. Uh, that day is uh, very important for uh, libraries and librarians because we celebrate a uh, few uh, activities. We celebrate uh, library activities uh, in uh, all Croatia, in all Croatian libraries. We celebrate uh, that day by awarding the best library of the year award, Library of the Year award, and uh, we celebrate, we visit the library and uh, promote uh, library activities and projects and programs on a regional and uh, local level. So, uh, for example, uh, these are examples of some library activities in the libraries of Croatia uh, regarding uh, projects for the Croatian Library Day, such as library sleepovers uh, with the co with cooperation uh, cooperation with libraries and uh, schools regarding a program where they can read and uh, participate in uh, some activities in the library and then have sleepover in the library. Uh, some other activities was uh, uh, libraries can award uh, best readers award for the library and that uh, can also be a nice event when all the citizens and users of the library come to the library and celebrate the best readers uh, of the local community. Uh, again, uh, libraries can promote uh, membership, uh, uh, pro promotional, let's say, membership uh, in the uh, libraries uh, where they invite citizens to come to the library and become a library's member. Uh, again, uh, libraries organize different kinds of events uh, uh, on social media, such as photo contest and etc. Uh, there was also some uh, cycling uh, event. Uh, for example, this event was held uh, uh, by Zagreb Library Association when cyclists uh, from uh, went from Zagreb to Sisak, where uh, CISAC was the host of uh, celebration of uh, Croatian Libraries Day and uh, more than 20 cyclists uh, came from Zagreb to uh, CISAC by bikes uh, in, uh, I think, two hours with uh, lots of problems such as uh, uh, falling off the bikes, uh, break, uh, breaking tires and etc. But uh, at the end they successfully come to the library and uh, celebrated this uh, Creation Libraries Day. Uh, again, one of the activities of libraries uh, for the Creation Library Day was 
Bibliobus uh, campaign. Uh, it was the opportunity to uh, raise a voice for the new Bibliobus on the local level and the campaign was very successful and uh, they uh, eventually got the Bibliobus. Again, uh, one of the activities could be also social media uh, contest, different kinds of uh, like take a picture in the library or um, move uh, move in move library from the closed space to the public space uh, on uh, promotional activities uh, reading outside uh, flash mobs and etc uh, as I mentioned one of the um, products of the Creation Libraries Day is the uh, Library of the Year Award. Award is given by the best library in uh, the year. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very popular award and from 2012 till now only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine libraries got this uh, uh, national award. Uh, it's very popular because um, it's usually that librarians from all over the Croatia uh, or, uh, come with the organized transportation to the awarded library. Uh, they talk with the local government and local communities. Uh, they got uh, lots of press, local and uh, regional, uh, promoting these uh, kinds of activities. And uh, again, social media campaign that means that uh, all the social media regarding uh, uh, this Creation Libraries Day and Library of the Year Award is uh, point out to this uh, Library of the Year. For example, last one was Gradska uh, Knjižnica Požega. It's a public library from Požega and they got this award uh, for this 2021 year, but unfortunately, regarding due to this COVID situation, they, we didn't manage to go to Požega, but Požega managed to come to Zagreb and celebration was in the National and University Library. Uh, next, I would like to talk about uh, uh, Creation Libraries Day and social media campaign. Uh, Creation um, Library Association is preparing a social media campaign for the uh, libraries, librarians and the users. For example, in 2016, uh, social media campaign was the best selfie in the library. Uh, users had library and uh, they did the and got and 77 the, the best this mom with his with her little daughter uh, reading a book from the library children's book book of course uh, in 2017 a social media campaign was the best promo movie in the library uh, 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 we got, I think, 17 uh, movies, beautiful movies from all around uh, Croatia uh, regarding uh, libraries uh, and the story about the library. Uh, we got movies from uh, seven school libraries, uh, six public library, two uh, university library and one special uh, library. Uh, the voting was uh, online on social media. In social media, I mean Facebook uh, on that uh, time. And it was very, very active uh, days on uh, our web, on, on Facebook during uh, the, this campaign because uh, with hashtag uh, Creations Library Day, we got uh, action on these beautiful movies, uh, but not only from public, uh, from the school children, from the, their parents, from their uh, family, and it was a very, very successful campaign. Uh, in 2018, we got a campaign called the Best Library Project, where libraries should present uh, their 
uh, best projects, uh, describe them and uh, put them on the social media. Again, uh, uh, the best projects were awarded. For that time, I remember the award was uh, 3D pens uh, for the library use, uh, usage, and uh, it was very, again, successful campaign. Uh, the last uh, social media campaign was held in 2018 and it was uh, connected to the month of the book creation, uh, also one creation uh, famous um, promotional activity on a national. Uh, the theme was reading rhythm, rhythm and uh, users have to uh, suggest or recommend one book from the, that they borrow from the library and again uh, participants get uh, got some award for example we got first second and third grade uh, two and uh, second and third was uh, from the school library and the first one for it was from the uh, public library in Jacobo. again it was a very uh, successful campaign and uh, uh, winners uh, were awarded on uh, Interliber, a uh, famous creation um, book, uh, mar book market or book event uh, in uh, Dallas, I am in Zagreb. Uh, last two years we did change a bit because we, uh, Creation Library Association, uh, decided to create a digital campaign, uh, digital stories on the Creation Library Association platform. Uh, first one in, was in 2020, a digital campaign called uh, Listai Priče. It was also connected with the Creation Book Month. And the last one, and currently still, it's a campaign that is still active. It's called uh, Libraries Always and Everywhere. It's uh, about uh, library digital presence. All the stories would be uh, posted on digital platform and can be shared on social media, on different social media, not only Facebook. And uh, again, it was a very successful campaign and we are hoping that this last one will be uh, again more, more successful than the last one. Uh, that's all regarding Creation Libraries Day, and now I would like to talk more about uh, advocacy project, uh, Creation Library Association advocacy pro project. I will mention uh, three of the project, uh, two regional and one international. Uh, one uh, regional project was uh, connected with IFLA uh, actions for development through libraries program grant uh, Building Strong Library Association. The uh, program was created by the Croatian, Bosnian and Serbian Library Association and it was called Cooperation of Regional Library Association Challenges and Opportunities. Uh, the next uh, library advocacy program was held in 2018 and it was again connected with IFLA uh, international advocacy program. Uh, it was a regional project again uh, with between Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia Library Association and it was called Unlocking of uh, the Potential of Libraries in Southeast Europe through regional cooperation and sustainable development. I will talk more about this project and uh, at the end I would like to mention international advocacy program uh, I think that all of you are familiar with it. It was, it's called um, Global Vision uh, Project. It was IFLA project and uh, it was Global Vision discussions uh, regarding library feel and contribution of the libraries to fulfill potential of the libraries uh, to build uh, literature, inform, and participative uh, societies. Uh, this project was held in 2017. So let's hear more about um, advocacy project IFLA Global Vision. Uh, so proje project uh, was launched in early 2017. Uh, Croatian Libraries Association was a uh, 
a participant, it was a partner who uh, also joined a discussion. We had online discussion. Uh, first time we used uh, Zoom on uh, in our library associations. I think in my life I first used uh, Zoom as a platform and we did a very good uh, discussion. We also bring some conclusions and we uh, partic participate with this conclusion on this uh, web page that I put it here. It's Global Vision e Ideas Store. The page is still active and uh, you can uh, take a look of uh, advices of uh, different uh, state regarding uh, ideas uh, for the library projects, activities and etc. Uh, the project was very successful and uh, uh, this idea store now are the biggest idea store uh, for action in the library field. Uh, on the presentation, you will have a link to it, but uh, if you want to know more, you can uh, email me and I would gladly answer your question. Uh, next project was a regional one. Uh, it was uh, connected with uh, international advocacy project. Uh, of uh, IFLA. It was a regional, regional project. Uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, Serbian Library Association was the, um, I, like uh, he was the founder of the project and Croatian Library Association and Bosnian Library Association were the partners of the pro, uh, project. Activities were, uh, uh, let's say we held uh, three workshop one in zagreb uh, uh, one in belgrade and one in mostar and the uh, workshops uh, will gather all the libraries within uh, croatia on this uh, small map uh, with the red dots you can see libraries who participated in this uh, activities and uh, it was more than it was 50 libraries from Croatia. Uh, again, at the um, uh, project, we had some conclusions. Uh, we connected library projects with the United Nations uh, uh, goals. For example, this is just one uh, example of uh, goal number four, quality education. Uh, the questions was uh, if your library uh, uh, in somehow, in some project or in some activities uh, can help with uh, this goal. Uh, this is, in this pie, you can see the huge number of uh, yes. That means that the libraries thinks that they uh, could help with this goal and some of the projects that uh, were uh, actively participated in the library was, for example, information literacy basics for senior citizens, uh, homeless people and children. Again, education between seniors and children in the community. That means the cooperation with, our, with the senior citizens uh, and they can help with their knowledge, with their uh, uh, with their experience to uh, help to share the knowledge with uh, children uh, in their community. Again, uh, there is a programs for children in hospitals, for programs for prisoners, and etc. That will be all regarding advocacy projects. And uh, at the last slide, I would like to mention one uh, very nice and uh, let's say loud uh, regional advocacy project is uh, connected to Zagreb Library Association. Uh, Zagreb Library Association is the biggest regional association in Croatia and they uh, started to uh, cycle uh, to organize cycling tours uh, visiting Zagreb library uh, re Zagreb region and uh, visiting library from Zagreb to uh, the uh, distant re distant cities uh, in this Zagreb region uh, Zagreb library association and created a working group called uh, cyclists, to yes, uh, that means uh, creation cycle librarians. 
and the creation cycle librarians are very well connected with sustainable development goals. Uh, in this area, uh, the program of uh, Zagreb Libraries Association cycle librarians have connections with the goals. From 2014 till now, uh, in these seven years, uh, Zagreb Li Library Association cycle librarians held nine cycle tours with more than 25 participants and uh, uh, 500 kilometers. They visited 12 towns, 11 libraries, six museums, and six natural heritage sites. The program was firstly held uh, only cycling through the region, Zagreb region, but uh, as the program became more popular and uh, cycle librarians, they promoted uh, uh, some local needs of uh, these libraries that they visited. So uh, we got uh, questions from another region, so maybe we can come to them. So we decided to create a second program, um, cycling through the uh, Croatia. Uh, that means that we can visit libraries from Zagreb to another part of Croatia uh, and during that time we will cycle, we will visit libraries, we will talk about uh, uh, reading, library projects and of course we will uh, spread uh, the word about libraries and we will uh, get more uh, networking opportunities within uh, li uh, librarians of course in Croatia and uh, worldwide. Uh, sadly, we, Zagreb Library, Library Associations, tried to organize some um, international tour. We, we planned it for the 2020, and uh, uh, we planned to ride from Zagreb to Rijeka, but unfortunately, uh, we had to postpone and then uh, eventually cancel the tour because uh, of the COVID situation. So I will finish with this uh, cute uh, project. And uh, if you have any question for me, this is my email address. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I think that it's very important to promote libraries with this kind of, of, of campaigns and, and, and other things, because it's a fact that often the users don't know the library services, no matter what we do. But then on the other hand, it is also that librarians don't know often our environmental programs and goals, so we really need this promoting work. All right, and now, is it my, no. Okay, now the voices seem to be fine. So I guess we have some time for questions and answers. Nicholas is not here any. Nicholas is not here, but is it so that Ivan has left us also? If there is no uh, questions, I would like to say something for the end. All right. Uh, my, my concluding thought uh, would be that the pressure and the influence coming from below is very important and crucial for a change for the better, because change from the top, from the government, happens too slowly and we have less and less time for change. This right. is my, my concluding thought. Yeah, um, that's a good point. We do need this positive activism and, and libraries can give a, a space for, for such activism. In, in Finland, we are having now a project we try to bring the youth to the libraries to discuss about environmental issues. Uh, the idea is that we could ask, invite the local 
decision makers so the youth young people could make them questions which concern concern them we are also having questions from the young people and the experts are answering them on on, on, on video, videos so i really think that is an important part um but maybe there was some questions on the chat has anybody followed the chat there's no questions in chat all right maybe an email to the participants yes. okay but if we don't have questions i think yes we can finish the, the session we can finish the session uh, we will have now five minute break before session one so we'll see you in 10 minutes till noon again a little bit more than five minutes then like seven or eight minutes break that okay all right i will like to thank you all the speakers um, and all who has followed this very interesting session thank you and bye thank you bye